talk for this afternoon is about the journey of Tabtaba, which is a blue-green alga or cyanobacterium called Nostoc Comune from the farm to the table. Uh, this is borrowed from the advertisement of chicken, uh, magnolia chicken. So this means uh, we are going to look at the journey of this uh, organism. This is how it looks like usually in the field and up to the point that you're going, you have had it just now. We, I cooked it with uh, sardines and just like a, a bayon in our um, table. <clears throat> this is the outline of my talk and uh, in the conclusion, I will just present to you the opportunities and challenges. Now, the history of the use of uh, blue-green algae or cyanobacteria as food dates as far back during the 400 or so uh, after death. And it started with uh, Nostro Comune. But I think most of you are more familiar with uh, the use of spirulina as um, food, which was um, which is being illustrated here, wherein the Aztecs used to harvest spirulina in the lakes of Mexico. There were five lakes before. The biggest one is Lake Texcoco, and then these are the other lakes. These are all uh, places where they used to harvest spirulina in those places. <clears throat> However, you're going to ask me now, where is this Lake Texcoco now? It's now being, uh, it's all, the lake became the Mexico City now, so you don't have any more the lake, okay? <clears throat> and it is also found pre uh, predominantly in Africa, uh, where you call it the place called Chad. There's a lake there, that is very hyper, hyper um, uh, alkaline, uh, and this is in Lake Chad. And this place is still there, it's still a lake, and this is how they usually harvest it, and they sand and sand dry the alga, and they eat it after the sand drying like a cake. That is your spirulina. And now uh, that the, this whole place here in, around Chad, the uh, the people here used to are eating the um, spirulina as their main food in their diet. However, the history of Nostoc Comune dates us farther back than the, the use of spirulina as food. Here, Nostoc Comune, I will call it as DJ for simplicity. It was um, known way back in 300 after death. It's known as Tian Xian Mi or Tian Xian Kai or Jie Xian Mi, which means it, to them it's like an immortal uh, organism because every now and then they would always just see it and then sometimes it disappears. So they think it has something to do with the immortality of the organism. And they even used, not only did they use it as food, but as medicine. And it was believed that um, during that time, Pung Je uh, was able to treat the emperor of southern China with this um, alga, and um, he was cured, so he was very happy about it. So he named the organism as Gen Xian Li after him, after uh Jie Chan, what is the name? Boom. Okay, and name the okay. Uh in Europe, uh the they, they noticed the organism much later and from the publications of general outlines and divisions of herbal medicine um by um, G Zen Li in the Ming Dynasty. They listed the uh, N Comune and N Comune variety flagelliforme, which is called in Chinese as Pachai. Okay, so 
Uh, then the presence of BGA in soils has always al also been associated as shooting stars because they noted the organism appearing after lightning and thunderstorm. Anyway, lightning, uh, lightning always comes after or before thunderstorm. So they noticed the appearance of this uh, uh, macro colony on soil. And it was, um, it was Paracelsus who named it as Nostoc. Um, and uh, the name has something to do with uh, something from your nostril, you know. And okay. So this is a, a variety of the Nostoc that uh, they have in China, in Mongolia. And it's called variety flagelliforme. This is how it is stringy, doesn't form a spherical colony like this. But if you look at it microscopically, again, it is a highly contorted, unbranched, filamentous, blue green alga when it is heterocystous. We have intercalary heterocysts in between the vegetative cells. These are your heterocysts. So what is Tabzaba? That is a local name for this organism, especially in northern part of the zone. Among it is the name that the Locanos give to it. And it, it has something to do with the fact that it forms spherical colonies. And so after a while, it becomes Mataba. So that's how it, is. it got its name. It's a cyanobacterium. It's a gram-negative bacterium, but with peptidoglycan, like acetobacter, acetic acid bacteria. Uh, but I think it has thicker peptido, uh, uh, thicker cell wall. It belongs to the cyanobacteria group, Nostocasi, and we consider it an alga because it exhibits oxygenic photosynthesis, meaning to say, in the process of photosynthesis, it emits oxygen using some carbon dioxide as, as its carbon source. It is thallus body, meaning to say you don't have root systems or leaves. And this is what mystified some of the people in, in <coughs> olden times in China, because how can it travel from one place to the other without root systems and leaves? It doesn't exhibit true sexuality, so it reproduces only by asexual means, either by binary fission or by fragmentation of its filaments. And it is called a heterocystous, non-branching filamentous type of leukemia. So this is how it looks like in the field, that's how uh, it looks like in the field. It's usually found intercropped with rice. And this is how it looks like it, when it is moist and it is under um, culture liquid medium, it forms spherical colonies. The spherical, there are two macro colony forms, okay? So the spherical colony, if you're going to make a cross section of that, it's made up of a blue green core and closing a white core. So the, that is the white core and that is the blue green part. Now, probably you will ask me, most of this blue green part here is made up of the heterocystous filamentous organism, while the white part, just like in any other organism, it is where you have the reserve food product made up mostly of proteinaceous material of different crystalline forms. Another form that you will see in the field is in its this type. This type, when the place becomes very dry, so it flattens, and what is happening is that uh, all, you, all what is retained is the blue-green part, and the white part disintegrates. So this is how it looks like the, the this time. <coughs> so as I was telling you, so this is the blue green part, which is made up of het long heterocystous trichomes, trichomes or detached heterocysts. That's how it looks like. 
that's your heterocyst, vegetative cells. And sometimes you will see, uh, this is the thick peptidoglycan. And inside the core, which is whitish, you will see some assisted trichomes and some crystalline structures that are proteinaceous of different forms. Okay, so, and usually you do not have so many, many heterocystous filaments in here. Sometimes you will see the spherical, small mi micro colonies like this, when enclosed by, enclosed by gelatinous sheet too. This means it has the capacity to break down the triple bonds between the nitrogen elements. And it does this at a very low energy level. Uh, we have about 80% nitrogen in the atmosphere. However, you and I, no matter how much we inhale that nitrogen, we cannot convert it into its reduced form and make amino acids and proteins. Only organisms with uh, nitrogenase enzymes are capable of breaking down this triple bond like our, some of our cyanobacteria. So they have the capacity, they have the nitrogenase enzyme that is capable of reducing that nit oxidized nitrogen into its uh, reduced form, and then you get your different amino acids from the alpha ketoglutaric acid that enters into your uh, Krebs cycle, then you go into your glutamic acid and glutamine. Then you get uh, your protein. <coughs> Nitrogen, no, no stock common is an indigenous food source in the Philippines. Uh, there are other places in the world where they use also no stock as a, a supplementary food like in uh, Asia, China, Fiji, Japan, Java, Mongolia, Siberia, and Thailand. And in South America, Ecuador, Mexico, and Peru. And these are some of those places where you saw most of the time it's confined in here, and some places we have them in South America. Mexico, they use spirulina, and in Africa, they use also spirulina. This is jar. However, there is something I would like to tell you that um, recently uh, in Peru, they eat a lot of nostoc uh, there also, and they harvest it fresh. And they prepare it as a stew called picante or as pate uh, in tortillas. And they think it is rich in calcium, so they give it to the children as milk substitute. However, it contains about 6.8 to 18.9 microgram per gram of beta and methyl amino L-alanine. This is called BMAA. What is BMAA? I, what's that? I got something wrong. OK. So the Peruvians eat this portion here when it is fresh, while we in the Philippines, we only eat the dry form, this part. So we don't we usually eat up to this part, okay? So what is BMAA? It's beta methyl amino l alanine or BMAA. It's a non-proteinogenic amino acid produced by some cyanobacteria. BMAA is a neurotoxin. I am sure you didn't get it. And it's a poten has its potential role in various neurodegenerative disorder, such as what is proposed to contribute to the else Parkinsonis in genetia complex of some humans in Guam. Okay. However, uh, in the Philippines, the one that was examined by Dr. Leopoldo Ilag, he did not notice any BMAA in the sample that we gave. As long as it is dried 
and it has probably been stored for so long. Okay? So in the Philippines, you will notice that the, the green part are areas where we find a lot of nonstop comune, and this is also where a greater number of people uh, are eating nonstop as an indigenous food. But nonstop can be found, we found it one time here uh, the, across the 88 now. Uh, I found it a, a large amount there in, La, in, in, La, in near Calamba. We also saw it in Balawan, in Cebu, and some parts in, um, in Visayas region. Of course, now we are doing more sadly. Okay. And some of the food preparations that they use. <coughs> what you have eaten is uh, we prepared it as no stock as sardines, or we prepared it as um, pickled vegetable, or we prepared it as dates, and we prepared it as uh, a sweet and delicacy with nata de coco. Now you will ask me. What are some of the reasons why they like uh, eating tap-taba? It is a tradition that was handed from one generation to the other. I don't know when it started in the Philippines. There is no record of it. Probably I'll have to dig more. Uh, another thing that they like about Nostok is that in the field it is very conspicuous. Sometimes you will really see it as a flat thing, very or spherical after a rainy season and glistening like a jade-like ball in the field. And it is very green, probably to them it's green, actually it's blue-green. And when you eat it, it is gelatinous, it has a gummy texture. Okay, how, but people when they were eating it, they did not know that it has so much good protein. We only did this upon analysis. And then you notice that the uh, crude protein can vary from, uh, it has a mean of 26%, and it can be as much as 28% uh, in the Japan disco diet. Okay? Its percent digestibility is very high, about 50-40%, very high. <coughs> the protein digestibility, okay? However, you will notice that in the, uh, is, uh, the amount of uh, crude protein varies depending upon the cultural conditions, uh, the place where you culture it, and also the parts what that you use. The PG part, the blue-green part, has usually a very high crude protein content compared to the, uh, to the this time. So this is our spherical and this is our, our this time. It has all the essential amino acids uh, that you may need in your diet. Okay, the here are some of the non-essential amino acid composition of the acid hydrolyzed samples of the field and laboratory culture, spherical colonies of Nostal. And now the essential amino acids are all found in this uh, uh, organism. <coughs> now PS is a Philippine spherical colony, PD is Philippine discoid colony, and JD is Japan discoid colony. Okay, there is also a great amount of free amino acid composition of the field, culture, the spirit, spherical colonies of Nosto Comune, including taurine. I think taurine is very important for the proper development of the brain. So it is found, it, it is in your free amino acid. It doesn't become part of your protein. How does Nosto crude protein compare with other veggies? <coughs> okay, here is a uh, design of Vita is your blue, is your uh, Nosto Comune. 
So this is calories and this is crude protein. So you will notice that the crude protein of your nostoc comune is definitely much higher, even higher than what you get from your saluyot. Anybody you know saluyot? Yes. Oh, okay. However, the calories that you get is much smaller compared to your red algae and your saluyot. Now you want to know how it will compare its crude protein with spirulina. This is nostoc comune. This is the crude protein about, I said, 26%. However, spirulina could be as much as 70% crude protein, much higher. But it is more difficult. I don't know, Nelly is, uh, knows more about cultivating spirulina. It is more demanding and it needs more nutrients. Now, the protein balance in our um, in our um, what you notice in our organism is that uh, this is Philippine discoid, Philippine spherical colonies. Uh, we notice that. Um, we have more or less the same protein bands between uh, spherical and discoid and the Japan discoid colony. What are these bands? What are these protein bands? Now, these protein bands are um, <coughs> related to this 55. They're related to uh, the capacity of the organism to regenerate from desiccated to a hydrated form. Okay. So it has that uh, protein bound in there. I think that's how simple I could give it. Okay. Other good qualities of nostoc comune, it does, it contains phenolic compounds. Total phenols will be about 4.09%. Uh, milligram tannin per gram. This uh, inhibits lipid peroxidation. It has anti-tumor effect, antibacterial and antiviral activity, and inhibits protein digestion. It has free radical scavenging activity uh, or antioxidant activity, uh, which is uh, very high, 144.96 percent DPPH free radical scavenging <coughs> activity. Naturally grows in soil or in hilly places, preferably it uh, likes in a sandy place, not a very um, silty place. So usually the people in the Locos region or in the northern Luzon, they just uh, harvest it from hilly places or it is usually found intercropped with rice. Okay, that is, that's no stock commode. And this is where they grow it, sometimes they grow it uh, in cultivation in aquaria, or in outdoor production like they have in field rice right now. Some of the favorable characteristics for growing nostoc comune, it has a direct relationship with soil phosphorus, calcium, iron, manganese, uh, but it, uh, it prefers a little bit silt and clay and sand in the soil for greater uh, drainage of water. Now, next question you will ask me, how fast does it grow? The growth rate is about 0 0.35 doublings per day in standing culture plus 1.5% CO2 in air. It has many say it has a doubling time of seven days. While that of spirulina in, uh, in uh, some uh, places where they cultivate it could be as high as 1.78 doublings per day. 
or doubling time of nine hours. I don't know what was the doubling time of your student. And then it is found also in crop with rice. And we extrapolated it to have about 200 kilogram dry weight per hectare per crop. Per crop is the three, three months, 90 days. Okay, so in conclusion, these are some of the opportunities. It has a high protein content, high phenolic content, high antioxidant activity, it can intercrop with rice and improve soil fertility and texture. It has low nutritional requirement, no need for nitrogen fertilizer to cultivate it, and it is resistant to drought because of its very thick gelatinous sheet around it. However, it has a low growth rate of about 0.35 grams per day, and uh, it may have BMAA at some point in its growth cycle, and it's found to be sensitive to pollution, especially to uh, especially to uh, copper. Okay, so did you know that in the Philippines, we have one of the highest poverty incidence in ASEAN countries, about 25.2%. We have the highest, even higher than Myanmar and Laos and Thailand. So do you think if we will cultivate some of our indigenous plants for feeding our growing population, we can lower this poverty incidence in the Philippines. Thank you very much.